Hello, and welcome back to Forgotten Hollywood in my living room. So, you may have noticed that the last few weeks I have not been posting much. I have a reason for that. Uh, I've been dealing with a lot. I will go into more detail in a future video. But right now, I'll just get up what I can, when I can. So, thank you for understanding. 25 years ago was Judgment Day, or at least it was in the Terminator franchise. August 29, 1997 was the original day that Skynet destroyed the world. In the first movie. In the second movie, things changed. In the third movie, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, the Terminator franchise is interesting in the fact that it has six movies, three of them make sense, and the others, they were attempts to recreate the magic of the original. But when you capture lightning in a bottle, as they say, it is incredibly, incredibly difficult to recreate such a thing. To explain what I mean, let's first go over the original trilogy. You have the Terminator, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. Now, starting with Terminator, it introduces the character of Sarah Connor. She is one of the key parts of the entire series. Sarah Connor starts out as an average woman, not very important, as far as everyone knows. However, a Terminator is sent back in time to kill her before she can give birth to her son, John, who is destined to be a leader in the human resistance against the machines. Sent back to protect her is Kyle Reese, who is uh, one of the soldiers in the regime. Now, Sarah, being just an average, everyday girl, she has no idea what to do. She doesn't know what's going on or why they're trying to kill her or how to defend herself. So she needs this guy who is a soldier. He's a guerrilla fighter. He knows weapons. He knows tactics. And he can keep her safe. He also ends up fathering her child. Spoiler, sorry. But it, it must be known for the trilogy to make sense. Well, Kyle's killed. Sarah is pregnant. And the original Terminator is destroyed. So Sarah takes her knowledge that Kyle has given her of this dark future for her son and she becomes a soldier herself. She learns how to fight. She learns how to shoot. She learns how to blow things up. She learns how to protect her son from anything that comes up. And she teaches him how to protect himself. How to survive. The key to everything for her is for her son to survive and to save mankind. That's, that's her purpose in life, is to raise up this great leader. There have been many, many amazing women in history that have done the same thing. You might not know all their names, but you probably have heard of their sons. It's not a small thing. Sarah, she trains, she gets stronger, she gets tougher. And eventually she winds up in a mental institution and her son's in foster care because they think she's crazy. Nobody's perfect. But then another Terminator comes out for her son and another protector from the future is sent. This one is a reprogrammed Terminator who looks just like the first one, but he is programmed to obey John Connor, even though John Connor is probably 12 years old. He focuses on protect John Connor. It's his job. That's his mission. He has nothing else. Unless John Connor gives him an order, which he, of course, does to save his mom from the mental institution before the evil Terminator can get to her. So now you have John, Sarah, and a good Terminator working together to destroy this threat from the future. But not only do they destroy the Terminators from the future, they also try to destroy Skynet, the evil AI who keeps sending these things so that the dark future never happens. Really, they think they did. But movie three shows us they can't escape fate. 
Skynet still survived. Skynet was still going to be put together. And they delayed Judgment Day, but they didn't stop it. And by this point, Sarah has died. But her memory and the things she taught her son carry on in him. And the trilogy ends with the destruction of the world. Skynet has risen. And here's all these people calling out on the radio, going, is anyone there? Is anyone there? What are we going to do? What's going on? And John picks up the radio and becomes the leader he was always meant to be. This is a well-written, well-rounded trilogy. It has natural character progression of Sarah finding out about the threat and preparing herself for it, preparing her son for it. John being ready when his time came because his mother got him ready, because his mother knew it was coming. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it works. That's why this works as a trilogy, because it tells a complete story. Kyle comes back, he tells Sarah what's coming. In the second movie, Sarah is telling John what's coming and getting him ready for it. In the third movie, it comes and John is prepared because of what happened in the first two movies. Three times they have attempted to reboot this franchise. And three times they failed. Spectacularly. The first time was with Terminator Salvation, which I have not seen, I cannot speak on, but I've heard mixed things. Then came Terminator Genesis. I have heard nothing good about this movie, including that they make John Connor the villain, which just undermines everything that came before. Then they made Terminator Dark Fate. This one I have actually seen. This movie was very controversial for a few reasons, mostly because of the fact that they do a twist at the beginning to shock the audience by murdering John Connor on screen as a child. I've never been a fan of movies that murder children as their opening. Never really been a fan of movies that murder children at all, especially on screen. If it happens off screen and I just hear about it later, I can generally deal. But when you're showing me the body of the child, his mother's arms, yeah, no, 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 I don't like that. But it goes a step beyond that, or actually several steps beyond that, because it really undoes or shuns everything that came before, even the little things. There's a scene where the aged Terminator, and I'll go into that in a minute, picks up the classic shades and then decides he doesn't want to wear them. What? Yeah, it's just we're just throwing all that out. We don't need that stuff anymore. Because we are in a new story. The new enemy that's just like Skynet, but it's totally not Skynet. And it makes Terminators like Skynet. But Skynet never existed. But this thing does. And it has Terminators. Because that makes sense. I'll go into that more later. But all the little things. You know, it has Arnold say, I won't be back. And the, the only thing that made me happy about the movie was they didn't use the line come with me if you want to live. The classic line had no place in that movie and it wasn't there. I'm grateful for that. One of the problems with this movie if you haven't seen my past rant on Mary Sue's maybe you should check it out because I go into far more detail with it. But it was like they were trying so hard not to make a Mary Sue they made characters that make no sense. Let's start with Danny. Danny is this girl. I don't know exactly how old she's supposed to be, but early 20s. She lives in Mexico City. She works in a factory. She doesn't know how to drive. She doesn't know how to fight. She doesn't know how to shoot. She's destined to be the leader of the resistance military. Now, 
most people who end up being leaders of a military resistance have military training, law enforcement background. They know how to shoot a gun, generally. But this girl, she couldn't really do anything at all. And she's trying to be convincing as this tough girl who inspires everyone to follow her and just I was I was a little confused as to how that was supposed to happen I mean the ending kind of explained because she ended up with Sarah Connor who's the one that trained John if Sarah Connor was training her then yeah it would be a self-fulfilling prophecy thing of her becoming the military leader because Sarah taught her so I guess she gets a couple years crash course training maybe up to five years learning how to be a military leader. And not to say that you can't learn how to be a commando in five years. But, like I said in my video with Mary Sue's, there are certain advantages to physical size. This girl does not have physical size. She does not have physical strength. And yet, it, she's supposed to be taking out people Bigger than she is, you know, not even taking a hit or breaking a sweat, but just taking them down. And there's a limit to the suspension of disbelief. But then that leads to Grace. Now, Grace has an excuse for her agility and strength and everything because she is augmented, meaning she is a blend of human and machine, which gives her the superior strength, which gives her superior agility which gives her the ability to scan and, and analyze really quickly. However, she also has a crippling weakness, which makes me think they were trying really hard not to make a Mary Sue, because Mary Sues have no weaknesses. So they're saying, oh, well, she's really perfect, and we don't want a Mary Sue, so we're going to give her a crippling weakness. And her crippling weakness is that she needs a certain cocktail of medications. And I and I do mean cocktails, not even she needs a shot of insulin. She needs a shot of insulin with an anticonvulsant. And I didn't even catch all the medications, but there were several of them. She has to mix the doses all together, and give herself a shot every time she's running down, or she will just sort of pass out and leave Danny helpless. Because that's effective in a bodyguard, for your bodyguard to be prone to collapsing and uh, passing out. Why is this the person they sent back if they knew they couldn't send the medication with them? I don't know. But the movie itself doesn't really work even as a standalone movie, especially as a Terminator movie. It creates the worst time paradox I've ever seen. Skynet was destroyed. So there was no Skynet to send back the Terminators, including the Terminator that killed John. And John wasn't able to send his father back because there was no Terminators, so there was no reason to send his father back in order to impregnate his mother. The only way that that makes sense is with Terminator 3 in the mix, because that says Skynet still came. If Skynet never came, there was no reason to send back Kyle Reese. Sarah would not have gotten pregnant with John. None of that would have happened. Then you have the old Terminator himself. They want to make this this um, Terminator scary? No. They did not want to make him scary at all. He was a nice old man who sold drapes and had opinions on what should be put in a little girl's room, be it butterflies or polka dots. And yes, they actually have that conversation for no apparent reason because they're just killing time. There's so much in the movie that goes beyond suspension of disbelief. Now, I can suspend my disbelief a lot for a lot of things. There's other things that I just, I can't suspend my disbelief at. My husband's always telling me, stop overanalyzing children's movies. This is a movie for five-year-olds. As I watch TV with my son and I go, wait a minute, that doesn't work. Yeah, I can't help myself. The biggest thing for me, as far as suspension of disbelief goes, is grace. Because not only does she have that crippling weakness that really makes her useless as a bodyguard, but beyond that, 
the original Terminator would always steal clothes from the first guy he came across that was roughly his size. And he would scan people and be like, okay, you're the right body type, you're the right fit, I will take your clothes. Grace didn't do that. She only took clothes off of men, and oftentimes men that were bigger than her. Yet, in the next scene where she's wearing the clothes, they are perfectly tailored to her body. As my friend says, clothes are not the one ring. They don't adjust size to fit the wearer. But for Grace, they do. First, it was a guy in a parking lot who, I admit, was skinny. But he wasn't exactly wearing women's skinny jeans, which is what she was wearing in the following scenes. Then there was a security guard that she knocked out and took his uniform. And he probably had 20 to 50 pounds on her. I didn't see them side by side, so I couldn't really tell you. But he did look bigger than she was, because she's very skinny. And the clothes fit her perfectly. The Terminators always scanned the people and made sure that they were the right size and shape before taking their clothing. Whereas she just takes them off whatever man is annoying her at the time. Though she took the from the first guy because they had the same size boots. Even though there was a girl standing right next to him that had clothes that would probably fit her better. She took the clothes from the guy. I don't know why, but she did. And it's things like that that just, they don't really fit with what's going on. They kind of, like I said, they pull you out of the movie, they suspend disbelief too far. In the end, for me, the movies just broke way too many laws of physics. They didn't really make sense coherently, as in, you know, why would anyone send a bodyguard to save their life when they knew the bodyguard would pass out at any given moment? The, the leap of the character progression from Danny not even knowing how to drive, to being like, I'll figure it out, to being, I can shoot a gun, to being, I know exactly where we should have our last stand. Yes, she picked where the kill box was when they had to explain to her what a kill box was. She doesn't know anything about war, she doesn't know anything about tactics, and she's with three soldiers. Yet, they don't pick the kill box, she does. Because that makes sense. Logic is not needed in this movie. But just all of these issues, all of these problems with the movie, just make it hard to watch. There's all of the things that they added to undermine or get rid of the original trilogy. To show we're, we're doing something new, we're out with the old, in with the new. And that just alienated the fans, that just made nobody like it. Shown in the box office, where it had a dismal opening weekend, and then went downhill from there. It didn't get anywhere near breaking even. Whereas the original movies did very well in the box office, especially T2 from what I understand. If you think about it, the real takeaway from this movie is kind of depressing, because John was killed and then someone else became the hero of mankind. But if she was killed, someone else would become the hero of mankind. It doesn't matter how many fall, there'll always be somebody to take up the mantle. It's essentially saying no one is really special. John wasn't that special. His death made no difference in the grand scheme of things. That stands to reason that if Danny was to be killed, other than the personal impacts of the two people she knows, her death wouldn't have any significant impact on anything. Is this the message they want in the movie? The problem with Dark Fate, the problem with Salvation, the problem with Genesis, is they were trying to recreate lightning in a bottle. And that's something that doesn't strike all the time. And what Hollywood needs to learn is that there are some movies, there are some trilogies that are really great and people love them and they just want them to be left alone. They just want what they have and that's enough. The first three movies in the franchise made up 
a well-rounded trilogy, a well-written trilogy. It made sense. They built off each other. They developed the characters naturally. It all made sense. And when you take this thing that fits together perfectly and pull it apart and try to add other pieces and make it into something new, you're not going to get beauty. You're going to get chaos. That's all I have to say on that. Thanks for watching. What do you think about my take on the Terminator franchise? Are you a purist for the original trilogy? Or is your favorite Salvation, Genesis, or even Dark Fate? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like or subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to hear my take on. And I'll catch up with you next time.